Today we are discussing Godzilla Minus One. It is the 33rd production in the Godzilla franchise for Toho and the 37th Godzilla movie overall. In a post-World War II Japan, Godzilla comes from beneath the depths to wreak havoc. Before seeing, I heard a lot of speculation that Godzilla Minus One is the best of the franchise, Obviously, I'm somebody who is very skeptical of critical reviews for movies I have not seen. I always want to see a movie, and then for my own opinion, I rarely am ever influenced by critical reviews. As far as the Godzilla franchise goes, I've seen all the American films, including the 1998 Roland Emmerich movie. I've seen a couple of the original films, like King Kong vs. Godzilla from the 1960s. I never saw much of a reason to watch the other movies, because why would I? A lot lot of people consider them parodies at this point in time. And let's be honest, the American movies aren't very good. The only one I love is Godzilla from 2014. The rest of them, I could care less if I ever watch them again. Although I'm happy to report that Godzilla Minus One is my second favorite movie of this franchise. An issue most people have with the American Godzilla movies is the human characters. They don't have much development. People don't seem to care about whether they live or die. The only one anybody ever liked was Brian Cranston and he didn't last very long. But luckily, in Godzilla Minus One, they actually focus a good portion of the film on the human characters, and they don't waste their time doing so. These characters are developed, and there's a good story here. I think that's the reason why people are loving this Godzilla movie so much, because the film adds weight to the human characters, unlike the American versions. I know people were also complaining about the character development in Shin Godzilla, so this is what this franchise has been known for doing. They never seem to care much about the human characters at all, or their backstories, or anything having to do with them. It's all about the monsters, but that's not the case in Godzilla Minus One. They actually care about developing their characters. Our lead in the film not only did a great job performance-wise, but his character is somebody that I connected with. He was a kamikaze pilot in World War II, but became a coward and left his post. He didn't want to die, he felt the need to live. So he randomly meets this girl post-war and her child who's not even hers. They don't have any money, but you begin to understand where all these characters are coming from. On top of that, what also adds weight to Godzilla Minus One is the time period. Taking place after World War II Japan, where they're coming off the heels of a loss, the country is in shambles. A lot of innocent people are dead. Like I said, everybody is poor. Nobody has a warm, cozy home to go back to and relax because of what happened during World War II. And then you add Godzilla into the mix to make matters even worse. Plus, since so many of these Japanese citizens fought in World War II, they don't have the physical strength or mental stamina to fight another big battle. All in all, there's a lot going on character-wise and country-wise in Godzilla Minus One that makes this movie feel more special for a Godzilla slash monster movie. The performances across the board are great, everyone is committed. This is the level of acting we have not seen since Brian Cranston in the 2014 Godzilla movie. Where has this acting been for all of this time? Of course you have the kick-ass Godzilla scenes too, who's back to his destructive ways. I don't know if I like the look of this Godzilla more than what we have in the American films, maybe because of this movie's budget, but no. Nevertheless, he still looks pretty sick, and every time he reappears on the screen in Godzilla Minus One, it feels like the world's about to end. Nitpick-wise, kind of like the 2014 Godzilla movie, I wish we could see Godzilla more. Don't get me wrong, I like the human characters in Godzilla Minus One, but this is a Godzilla movie, and just like in those other Godzilla movies, we don't see him all that much. When he appears, it's great. When he's not on screen, it's like, I kind of want to get back to the Godzilla stuff at some point. I also think they made a poor decision with a character in the movie. It would have been more impactful if they just stuck with their gut instead of going back on what we thought we knew about this person. That's all I can say without spoiling anything. From beginning to end, Godzilla Minus One was a heck of a good time. I like how, for once, they actually provided tender and care for their human characters. Godzilla, as always, is awesome to see on the big screen. I love the time period. The special effects are impressive for a lower budget movie. I want to see more Godzilla movies from Toho and from other studios from around the world at this point. I'm kind of tired of the American movies. I don't want to see any more. I know we're getting another one in 2024, unfortunately. So please, Toho, just... Just keep making these movies and pumping more out because this one was 
was pretty good. I'm giving Godzilla a minus one and eight out of 10. Okay, so what are your thoughts on Godzilla Minus One if you've seen it and where would you rank it amongst your favorite Godzilla movies? Let me know in the comment section. And of course, as always, thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see you all next time.